So now that we have a domain and range, we're going to come across this term, which is going to be called the natural domain. And that's actually kind of what we saw in the example that I did before. When we had our circle here, we saw that x only went from positive 2 to negative 2. That was actually our natural domain. And the definition of this is for any values. Well, let me read it straight out of the book. If a real valued function is a real variable, is defined by a formula, and if no domain is stated explicitly, then it is to be understood that the domain consists of all real numbers for which the value formula yields a real value. This is called the natural domain of the function. And what I left out when I define the actual domain in the range is that we can specify what our value of x is. When our function is, uh, let me rewrite here, equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, we can say that x is between 0 and positive 2. This would be defining the domain. That's saying we're only going to evaluate the values of x between 0 and 2, so we're not going to concern ourselves with the whole rest of the graph this would be our f of x when we define the domain. If we do not define the domain, then you graph the entire function from negative infinity x to positive infinity x, and whatever values of x describe the function is the natural domain. Now, I'm not quite sure why this is uh, covered in the book here, but to be thorough, I'm going to cover it as well. The absolute value function. Say you have f of x equals x absolute valued. And we denote the absolute value by these vertical line brackets. Another thing you might also see is written abs parentheses x. Basically, what the absolute value is, is you're going to take the total positive value of whatever your input x is. So if you were to input f of 2, obviously the positive value of 2 is 2. But if you're going to input f of negative 2, the total value of negative 2 is still 2. You don't include the negative direction in this. It's always the positive value. And that's what our absolute value function does. So your graph for um, the function f of x, let me change my color here, f of x equals x would be a straight vertical line. However, your graph for the absolute value of x would still be your straight vertical line in the positive x-axis, but it's going to go the other way for the negative x-axis. Instead of continuing on, it's going to actually change direction. But this follows what we did before. When we put in positive 2, we got the value positive 2 back out of our equation. And when we implemented negative 2, we got positive 2 as the y value back out of the equation as well. So that's just uh, the absolute value x. If you ever have a negative number, you just throw the negative right out of it. Now there's going to be some operations that we need to be familiar with for this. And this is the one that I've already stated. The absolute value of negative a equals positive a. And that's going to be a is any real number.
the absolute value of negative a equals the absolute value of a. The absolute value of a times b equals the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. And b is also a real number. The absolute value of a divided by b equals the absolute value of a divided by the absolute value of b, with of course the restriction that b cannot equal zero. Notice that restricting that b cannot equal zero is part of our domain. Well, we basically are saying b can be any value as long as it's not zero. We're stating the domain. And the last rule we need to be familiar with, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. And I'm going to neglect doing the derivation of that, but that is known as the triangle inequality. I would highly recommend you guys play around with some of this stuff to see if you can find that that's true. And you will. So that covers everything for the properties of function. See you guys in the next, next slide.